Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today's card features the Fairy Friends Stamps and Dies with some no-line coloring using colored pencils. I love the look of the no-line coloring and thought it would be fun to show this technique with colored pencils as opposed to markers. I'm going to start by stamping my images with a very light ink. I'm using the Antique Linen Distress Ink. You want to use something light that will blend in to your coloring medium, whatever it may be. And then I'm going to start coloring in these images with Prismacolor colored pencils and blending out the coloring lines with some Gamsol and a stump pencil. I'm going to start with the Purple Fairy, move on to the flowers, and finish with the Blue Fairy. I have sped this up quite a bit to... Um, so you don't have to sit here for as long as it actually took me to color all of these images. And I am going to play a little bit of music and I will be back in a little bit to talk through the rest of the card making process. So for now, I'm going to turn on some music and you can watch the no line coloring.
I'm just finishing up my last image here. And then I'm going to take the coordinating Fairy Friends dies, cut them apart with some metal snips scissors and tape them over my images and then die cut them using the Big Shot die cutting machine. I used a little Wink of Stella clear glitter brush marker on the fairy wings to give them a little bit of glitz and glimmer. And then I'm going to go ahead and die cut the largest stitched rectangle frames, also new from the 2016 CHA release. And I'm going to die cut that from some watercolor cardstock. I'm doing this a couple times. I'm going to need that inside piece as well as the frame itself. And that's because I'm going to build the scene with that inside panel. So from the second rectangle, I'll die cut one of the new Meadow Borders dies. This one kind of has more of a um, hill look to it, and it's this great grassy border. I'm going to just run that back and forth a couple times to get a really nice clean cut line. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply some Distress Inks to my background to create a blue sky and then to the grass to give it that nice green color. This is a very spring-like looking card. I have die cut this frame several times as well as I'm going to be stacking the frames one on top of another to give a dimensional frame to the finished card. Now on the solid rectangle, I am going to apply some tumbled glass distress ink. This is going to be, a, I'm going to use a really light hand to apply this. I've had some questions regarding applying the distress inks and and what using a light hand means and things like that. Not only does it make a difference like how hard you press the ink into the paper, but it does make a difference what paper you use. I find that watercolor paper is much more forgiving when applying the di Distress ink as opposed to regular cardstock. So if you have some of those harsh lines from the ink blending tool, they tend to um, be able to be blended out easier on watercolor cardstock. I do still use both types of cardstock depending on the project. For this one, I am going to be using a little bit of water, so I definitely wanted to use watercolor cardstock as opposed to tr traditional cardstock. And um, because I've had so many questions about that, I will be doing a video soon showing in real time a little bit um, how I blend them together and what it looks like on different types of papers. I am using Shabby Shutters and Mode Lawn Distress Ink for the grass itself, and I'm using a separate piece of cardstock to hold down my paper while I blend those colors together. This not only keeps my fingers out of the ink, but it also makes it easy to, that way I don't get those fingerprints. So it keeps me from getting messy, and it also helps you not get any fingerprints into the finished piece. Now on both of these, I am going to take the Distress Sprayer filled with water and spritz these with water. Not a lot, just a little bit. I don't want a ton of distressing. Leave that sit for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to just dab that dry with a paper towel. You want to make sure these are really good and dry before you do any other stamping or especially embossing. So I hit the grass border with a heat gun to dry it really well and I'm going to take one of the greetings from the fairy friends stamp set and I'm going to curve it gently on my block to match the curve of the grass then I'm going to use a powder tool along that border ink up the greeting with Versamark ink and then stamp that along that grassy border I just love you could definitely stamp it straight if you wanted to but I love how it kind of follows that nice sloping look of the grassy border or that meadow border die I'll sprinkle on some gold embossing powder and then I'm going to heat that up to set it I did lay out all of my flowers and fairies and that was just so I could kind of get a, an idea where I wanted to stamp these cute little um, images from the Fairy Friends stamp set so it kind of looks like the magic wand is is uh, spreading fairy dust or whatever and then I'll sprinkle on that gold embossing powder heat that up 
and then I can put the card together. I could definitely have done it with the images already glued down and in place, but I don't, I try not to do that so that any embossing powder only sticks to the project and doesn't maybe accidentally stick to some adhesive on the other images. I'm using a combination of medium and bling Zotz glue dots to glue all of my flowers and things to my card. Once I have all of these in place, I can go ahead and attach this to a card base. While I was coloring, I didn't mention I wanted the faces for the fairies to definitely stand out, so I used a black pin to draw in their faces, the eyes and the mouth, so that they definitely showed up. And I also colored in a fairy wand and additional sunflower as well that I didn't show in the coloring. Now I'm going to take a side fold card base from Simon Says Stamp and glue one of the frames in place right there. Go ahead and apply, apply some adhesive in the center and adhere that center panel. And then I'm going to just take some adhesive and glue four frames, one on top of another, all the way around to build up the frame and to give it some nice dimension. So there is what the finished card looks like. Thanks for watching this video showcasing the new Lawn Fawn Fairy Friends stamps and dies. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.